Hello and welcome to my Minecraft Travel Journal. I explore the world of Minecraft on the Xbox 360, so all of my screenshots are borrowed from Minecraft Wiki and a few other places online. Doing it on the Xbox was a good compromise because I, I got to spend the time with my son and we had a good time. The first thing that struck me about Minecraft was the lack of goals or objective. I kept asking my son, Jackson, but what do you do? The short and initially unsatisfying answer he gave me was, whatever you want, Dad. And it's true. Minecraft is like a semi-truck full of Legos. Simultaneously nothing and everything. Minecraft is a virtual world game. I don't even know if you can call it a game any more than you can call Legos an activity. There are an infinite variety of modifications, or mods, one can use while playing the game. Anything and everything in the infinitely malleable world of Minecraft can be changed, adapted, or created. Mods can range from the micro, changing the color of the sky, or giving yourself the ability to walk on water, or the, to the massively macro, using a world generator to create a custom planet that would make Slardabart fast jealous. One of the more interesting mods I want to get my hands on is the Hunger Games one, or at least one of the options available. The world of the Hunger Games has been completely recreated, and players meet online to compete in the same way the tributes from the various districts and stories. This is a perfect example of the way technologies, like virtual spaces, help to blur formerly distinctly delineated areas in our lives. Here we have a successful series of young adult novels that are being made into popular films. To capitalize and complement those, people are living the story in a virtual environment. They are learning about social structure, economy, interpersonal relations, and archetypal themes. Thanks to technology, the narrative has simultaneously permeated entertainment, education, philosophy, and politics. With this sort of saturation, every educator can find pedagogical levers and teachable moments. To get started, we could either do creative or survival mode. In the survival mode, players have to eat, drink, and build shelter to protect themselves from the elements and zombies. They can also interact with the avatars of real people and make free choices about how to interact and collaborate or not. Putting aside everything else for a moment, I've always been amused and charmed by the rough, pixelated graphics of Minecraft. They are nostalgically similar to the low-res games I grew up with. I picked survival mode because I was wary of diving into the huge sandbox of open creative play where I had to make my own toys. The first order of business was to find shelter before the sun went down because this was when the zombies came out to kill. In the version that we were playing, we started off with a pickaxe. Any weapon, including your hand, can chop or mine resources, but some are more suited for specific tax tasks, just like in real life. I mentioned how reality is flexible in Minecraft, but it is important to remember that, like the literature of magical realism, once a few rules are set, the full force of reality is in effect. So we had a pickaxe, and that is most well suited for mining stone, and that's what we did. We found a source of stone we could quarry to build ourselves rudimentary shelter in the little time we had before the sun went down and we faced danger. To acquire resources, you just walk up to it and start hammering away or picking away. After the requisite number of wax, a block of stone is put into your inventory. Once we had a bunch, we just had to lay them, which was much more rapid than doing it in real life. We also had some time to pop out to get to a copse of trees and gather some wood. The manual labor did diminish my hunger, which if it gets too low, will start eating away at my health. Jackson had picked uh, a handy starter kit because we also had torches and a little bit of food so we wouldn't have to hunt or forage until the next day. All through the night, which only lasted several minutes, we could hear scary grunts and groans outside of our hunt. And we spent the time inside building a crafting table. A crafting table is an essential element in Minecraft because while you can make anything you want, you have to have a place to do it. The crafting table is the main entry point for players' creativity. There they can combine anything and see what comes of it. To make something out of resources, you right-click on your crafting table to open a crafting grid where you can place blocks of resources that then magically turn into a new product. The standard unit of anything in Minecraft is a block. Put four blocks of wood planks in your crafting grid and you get a workbench. And this is what I did for a good while. Run out, get stuff, come back to the hut, and see what I could make. I had to meet my basic needs. I, I found safety and made friends. I gained confidence through trial and error. Abraham Maslow would love Minecraft. And that's when I saw it. That is the fun part. I could get excited about whatever excited me. Since the dawn of civilization, that has always been the key to getting through to a student. 
people will label, labor unbelievably hard at something that piques their interest, and nothing can stop the learning once that gets started.